What's up, y'all? This is Lyrics Born straight out the Bay Area, California, and right now I am chilling with Rob on Front Row Live. Uh. Dude, this album number 10, Quite a Life, yes. is like, I'm having a hard time picking a song to talk about because I like I, it's such a fun record, so I, I can't really focus on just one song individually. What was the studio process like creating this, this album? Well, that was part of it, definitely. I, I you know it's the 10th album and so i wanted to make a really well-rounded statement yeah and uh obviously the title is quite a life so i just wanted to touch on you know as many facets as i could of right. of my life or daily life that um that i could with 11 songs you know and so part of it was to have a good time also you know i mean there's there's definitely some more kind of more quiet sort of introspective moments mm. you know and reflective things in there but there's also a lot of like good time party stuff right yeah and, and with such a career like yours like I, I assume like as you get into another album it's a lot harder to just do 10 11 tracks like so do you have a, a, a system now on being able to to meet that challenge of those 10 11 12 tracks for a record well I, I think the challenge for me really album after album at this point is like okay well what do i do that i haven't done yet you know what i mean right so i mean after like it's like you said after 10 albums and i don't know how many features right. and you know mixtapes and all that it's like when i sit down to write every new album it's like okay well what can i do that i haven't done before yeah. or even better, what can I do that hasn't done be, been done before? Right. So that that really becomes the challenge, it, and it forces me to sort of dig deeper, you know, which is great. I mean, I'm I'm happy to do that. You know, it's it's all I put myself most of the time in in the shoes of the listener, you yeah. know, and what do they want to hear, and what do they, you know, like what would somebody that um, has heard my past music mm. appreciate that I'm doing differently or knowing what the landscape is what would somebody like to hear me do that that um that nobody else is doing right so that's really how i approach every album and at the same time like with with all the features that you continue to do throughout the years like how do you keep in mind you know the artists that you want on your records like how you know how do you step it up that way as well you know to be completely honest the track dictates that yeah you know so like when when monophonics gave me that that beat for can't lose my joy i mean the only person that came to mind was aloe black yeah you know or when uh you know when um when rob from galactic gave me the track for when i get my check it's like i just hear and i see gift of gab charlie tuna yeah. joy Velarde on those songs you know it doesn't always work out that way but the funny thing about this album is um this was probably one of the it, it, it took a long time to make, but in terms of like getting person, like people, the features, yeah. it was not that hard. Like pretty much everybody I called was ready. Was ready. <laughs> they were available. They said, yes, it wasn't really an issue, nice. you know? So, and that's pretty rare. Yeah. You know, that's pretty rare. A lot of times, you know, you'll have your first choice for features and then somebody's not available or they have some other kind of conflict. Mm. But that didn't happen on this album. I mean, it was just all meant to happen. That's what that's. What <laughs> yeah. You know, my, my favorite story was, uh, you know, when I, when I talked to Aloe yeah. and he was like, look, I know this is your 10th album. I know it's a big deal. He's like, just send me the track. Don't even worry about it. Wow. You know, and I explained to him what the concept was and he was like, don't even worry about it. And he shot he shot it back to me like a couple weeks later, the way you hear it now yeah. on the album. So it, it's it's been amazing. You know, it's been amazing. Just the sort of enthusiasm that, that people have had for the record. It's right. it's really cool. What about as far as like the co-writes? Um, I think you co-wrote with uh, the rival uh, the revivalist, uh, yeah. David. So, you know, what was that like for you? And like, how, how often do you get to co-write with other artists that are not in the hip hop world yeah well i live for that to be honest i mean i'm a writer too and so i i really appreciate when uh someone else really takes their craft seriously yeah. and they're really great at it you know and i've been fortunate to li to work with um a lot of great writers over the years and shaw is amazing i mean he's just amazing so like he he on my last album real people he he uh, wrote and recorded on that album as well. And I think he's probably 
one of the best writers that I know. You know, and it, because to me, I don't, I don't differentiate between, you know, if someone writes in a certain genre and I'm in a different genre. I mean, to me, it's like, is the song you're writing memorable? Is it effective? You know, it, is it one of those things that I just can't get it out of my head once yeah. I hear it one time? You know, any song that meets those criteria is a winner, you know, regardless of genre. And, and I think that, you know, we have to look at all those things equally. And, you know, like with with John, I mean, that because that's that's what I kind of liked about this record, that it's although you are a rapper, you are a hip hop artist anybody could listen to this record uh, it, it's it's uh, the genre i'm thinking is just fun like that right. <laughs> that's what i you know i put this record on and that's what i feel i feel like i'm having a great day like and it makes me want to once the record's done it makes me want to start it all over again yeah. so it, is is that something that like to get to this 10th album and the kind of album that you did on this 10th album do you feel like that has that just happened naturally over the years as you created every new record that's a good question, man. I mean, it, it's it's all by feel, yeah. you know. So it's like if I do a song and it's not working, well, then you start over, you know, or make the adjustment. You know, I'm not going to sit here anymore. You know, in the early days, I would probably, if something wasn't working, I would struggle with it. And, you know, maybe if I just do that or maybe, I, you know, I'd even try to, like, fool myself into thinking that it was working you know right. but now it's like look if it doesn't work you don't force it you know what i mean make the adjustments and then hopefully that gets it done and even if that doesn't you start again you know you just sort of have to trust that process and i think you know as artists we all strive to be in the moment mm -hmm. you know and not really get bogged down by whatever external thoughts may come into your mind right. you know and that's really the discipline that that came with time that came with time it's just to be able to to trust myself and my own inner opinion mm. you know on on what it is that i'm creating now you know every artist has that mentality of like you have to create your own lane and in, in order to make it you don't want to sound like somebody else but that statement is kind of I feel like it is stronger for you because you're not just creating your lane. You're creating a lane for Asian American artists mm -hmm. that, you know, are trying to be where you're at today. So do, do you think about that as you're creating new music? Is that something that kind of like scares you at the same time? You know, I do think about it. I, I think when I first started, I probably didn't think about it as much because, you know, coming from the Bay Area, when you look like me or you do what I do, there's a lot of people in, in that do what I do right. that look like me, you know, names end in a vowel, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> but then as I started, so, so I, I never, when I started, I never really felt like what I was doing was that unusual culturally, you know. But then I guess when I started making more albums and I started touring the world right. and I started playing these cities and I would, you know, also, you know, just kind of see what the, the, the cultural makeup of that city was that I was playing or I would meet with my other artists, my peer group in other parts of the country or other parts of the world. Then I started to see, oh, okay, what I am doing is, you know, it is, at that time, it, it, it this is a little bit different than what people are norm, uh, accustomed to, you know. Right. And so now I look at it like absolutely, you know. I mean, I've been at this so long and unfortunately we haven't seen like the barriers broken down as quickly as right. I, as I think we should. Right. Although, you know, I'm just really happy that we're like in the midst of this renaissance right now with like, with what like Dumbfound Dead is doing and Year of the Ox and, you know, China Mac and, yeah. you know, Keith Ape and, um, you know, and then in the we got we got like Bamboo from the Bay as well. Yeah. Like yes, absolutely, Bam and Rocky. Shout out to Bam yeah, and Rocky out there. And then uh, you know, and then Far East Movement and what those guys are doing with not only with their music but in their their business. Right. You know, and then when you look at the movies and television, you know, you see what Ali Wong is doing. You see what Randall Park is doing with with um, Fresh Off the Boat and Constance also now and Aquafina obviously and. Right you know, crazy rich, rich Asians is like number one movie, three, we three weeks. And I mean, that's crazy. So I feel like we're like in a midst, in the midst of this Renaissance right now. And I'm just, I'm just happy to, you know, play some small part in that, you know, after right. all these years, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate to 
be a part of something and still be active that I helped create way back when. Right. You know what I mean? Now, since you kind of mentioned uh, the, the the movie, um, aside from that movie, last towards the end of last year, we had that crazy madness with BTS, for example, the, the right. K-pop group that yeah. kind of just opened the doors for K-pop here in the world. Yeah. Do you feel like they're, do you feel like they kind of opened the doors for you as well, even though it's not the same kind of genre? That's hard to say. I mean, yeah, probably, you know, because people look at Asians in a different light, you know, right. when they see the success that they're having. The, the differentiation I would make is that, you know, we're Asian American artists. Mm -hmm. So we have a much different, we fight much different battles right. here in this country, you know. So it's like, I, 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 I say that all the time. It's like the reason why, you know, it's, it's almost taken me so long to get to this point is because I didn't have like the cultural leverage with the record companies or yeah. the management companies or the booking agencies and the, you know, which is much different than a Korean artist coming from Korea. Do you know what I mean? Because their industry is basically Korean, you right. know? That's, that's so idea. it's just, it's just, a, I think it's important. Like sometimes people don't really understand the difference, you know, but you know, it'd be, it's just, it's different, but yeah. overall, of course, it's great. You know, um, It'd be hard for me to tell you what exactly it is that they do right. that um, that, that paved the way. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think it's great to see more Asian faces on TV. I mean, that's always good, you know. Right. And hear it on the radio. You know, it's funny. It's like, you know, and then in the two thousands and in the nineties, I stuck my song started get a, getting licensed a lot for movies and. And TV, and I used to always say, if it wasn't for my songs in these movies and TV, there would be no Asians in the movies or TV. You know what I mean? That's true. So, but now that's changing, obviously. And I think, you know, for those of us that have like really worked hard and stayed positive and optimistic about that situation changing, to see that just coming into fruition now, it's it's really exciting for me. You know, it's really, really, it's a, it's like a very it's a proud moment. You know, to not only to not only just be a part of it, but just to observe it, you know? Right. And this, I mean, the release of this 10th album is also kind of like history for you um, because no one else has done that. Right. Um, how do you, how are you able to go on 10 records independently? And it, see, it, it sounds like it's been successful too, because obviously you're here in the States promote or in LA promoting and yeah. you're going on tours and you know, you hit up artists to do features and there's no bounce back. It's like, yeah, we're going to do it. Like, Right. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. All I can say is that, you know, I've been really fortunate. Yeah. I've been incredibly fortunate because there are so many things, been so many things along the way where I probably should have quit. You know what I mean? Like, somebody who maybe wasn't quite as stubborn or you know wasn't up for the challenge or frankly just had other things that they wanted to do right. you know I, I there are plenty of opportunities for me to just bow out but I'm, i was always chasing something yeah. you know i was always chasing something and i think as an artist um thankfully i felt like i always had something new to say yeah. you know and um so I think that's really what drives me, you know, is once I made album number eight, I was like, oh, shit, I'm only two away from album number 10. And then once I made number nine, I'm like, shit, I got one more. And then I'm at 10, you know. And I think, you know, 10 albums for any artist is monumental, okay. you know. Like I remember when, you know, when I was a kid and, and Too Short dropped album number 10, you know. And he was like, album, this is it, album number 10. And I was like, that's crazy. Like I wanted – I wanted to hit that point, you know, right. I wanted to hit that. And so, you know, fortunately, you know, even when things got rough, there was always a, a distribution deal there mm -hmm. for me. There was always, you know, some other opportunity there for me that right. I was able to use and, and help move my career forward. And I, I, I just been really, really blessed. You know, I've been really fortunate. And I, aside from that, and just hard work and staying inspired i mean i can't really explain it any other way you know now over the over the last years of you being in this career um how do you feel your delivery of your lyrics has kind of evolved you know 
I'm willing to try things. Okay. You know, I'm really willing. You're willing to try things now, or th this has been from from the beginning. I think from day one. Okay. You know, I was always open to really trying things, even if there was the potential for failure. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just it's not exciting for me unless. I'm trying new things. And sometimes it's not exciting for me unless I'm on that brink of failure. You know what I mean? Like I really You need that you need that push to like I need that push. <laughs> I need that excitement. I need that I just need that uncertainty, mm -hmm. you know, and that's really what drives me and you know, I love music so much and I love art so much that when I hear artists doing something that maybe I haven't tried yet or I maybe previously I thought I couldn't do. Right. It just pushes me and it challenges me to try that. You know, just try it. You know what I mean? And it doesn't always work, you know I mean? and But the fact that, you, you know, I think that's one of the things that uh, has fueled me is just like that curiosity and that willingness to explore, you know? So, like, on every album, I try to do something, at least, if not, you know, all the songs, at least half that I haven't, done before whether it's you know trying some other vocal technique or some other pattern or some other rhythm or some other vocal tone or texture you know so yeah and as you mentioned that like what song from this record um kind of challenged you the most in, in the studio yeah i think probably can't lose my joy what right. was the the song with aloe black was probably the most challenging on on so many on a lot of different levels you know what i mean because you know, uh, I just read somewhere recently, like, it, basically the song chronicles this this time in my career when I, it was for just starting to take off. And my wife, who was in the band, she was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. You know what I mean? And she was in her late 20s. I was I just turned 30, you know, and it was a really difficult time. And we've been living with it. Now, thankfully, she's in remission now, but we've been living with it for you know, over a decade, yeah. you know, and nobody knew about it. You know, we always just kept it very private because it was just something that we were dealing with, right. you know. But this, I was like, you know, I told her, it, because this was my 10th album, I'm like, you know, we never really talked about it, but people could really benefit from hearing yeah. this, you know what I mean? Just to know that there's hope and, and just because you have, you know, this, this you know very serious issue that you're dealing with it doesn't mean it's the end of life altogether you know what i mean yeah, I and so that. you know i think that that was a very difficult song to write because you know i i can tell you all day how i feel about it but when you write a song you've got, you've got 16 so bars you know what i mean you got another 16 bars and you got eight bars so you got to kind of that's that's the the difficult part too is just like how do i compress it all you know right. so i can get my point across in this finite amount of time you know what i mean so that was that was really challenging just from a emotional and 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 uh from a standpoint and also just the the actual creation of the content i mean that was difficult i think you know when you listen to songs like um on a lighter note when you listen to songs like um clap your hands like i'm doing things vocally that I've never done before, you know, just using different tones and experimenting there. And it, it keeps it fun for me, you know? It's like, I don't want to do the same thing. I can't make the same album right. over it's and not, over again. It's not going to be as exciting like that. Right, you know, and I don't think people want to hear me do the same thing over yeah. and I think people are accustomed to me at this point, like pushing myself, pushing them in a certain way, you know? So... Now, what about, um, I can't remember which song specifically, but I remember horns in one of the songs. Yeah. Like, I, I've been such a sucker for that lately, and I feel like a lot of artists are starting to kind of bring the horns and the saxophone, and every once in a while, like, the string sections and stuff like that. Like, what kind of inspired uh, for you to bring that in? I mean, you know, I've been touring with the live band since probably 2005, yeah. you know, and... It, it's again it's it, it just came from a place of me wanting to grow you know like i can you know i made mostly sample based albums for the first couple albums in my in my career you yeah. know but as you get old it's the same thing it's like as you progress and you grow you know you want to try new things and just as a record collector and as a as a music you know aficionado it's like i always appreciated 
you know, those sort of songs from my childhood or from the past where, mm -hmm. you know, these big orchestrated songs with, like you said, horns and strings and all that stuff. And I'm like, why can't I bring that to hip hop? Why? Who says we can't do that here in this genre? Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's what it did. And it was another challenge for me because... I had to learn a whole new vocabulary, you know what I mean? And I, I had to take a different approach to, um, to recording and writing those songs as opposed to just beats, you know what I mean? So, which is cool, too. I mean, I do that, too, obviously. But, um, you know, again, the, 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 whole, the whole focus is to grow, you know. And you can't grow unless you sort of enlarge and and boost your repertoire you know what i mean and so that's what i that's what i try to do awesome dude well again thanks for hanging out with me thanks for this record this record like it's such a fun record i want to keep playing it over and i can't wait for you guys to hear it it dropped september 14th it's called quite a life yeah. and um for those that haven't heard you yet i mean i don't know why they haven't but <laughs> like what makes you so different from any other like artists out there today? you know I, I think i don't know maybe it's just that there's only one me there's only one you, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to occupy that space. I'm not trying to occupy anybody else's space, yeah. you know, because then who's going to be me if I'm <laughs> trying to go be some, somebody else? Do you know what I mean? And so, I mean, I, I think that that's really important is just listening to that inner voice that is only yours, yeah. you know, and, 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 and bringing that out. I mean, that's maybe that's it you know <laughs>